Well, now that these cylinders have cured for a couple weeks, it's time. Please don't tell my wife, but it's time to cure them. And you can cure them one of two ways, as you guys might know. You can cure these by putting them on the bike and running it for you know a long time. But remember, it's not totally hardened and oil and chemical resistant until it's cured. So the better thing to do to cure it is to put it in the oven. And I only have one oven available to me. First you shake it, then you bake it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for two or three hours. I'm hoping that all they'll need at 325 is about two hours. And I only have about three hours while my wife is away. So hopefully it doesn't stink up the house and I can have these in and out in no time. Pray for me. Okay, I'm dead. Uh, so it pretty much fills the entire room with smoke. Um, and it kind of smells like noxious gas. Oh man, I feel like I just got yelled at for spray painting in the basement and now I'm gonna get yelled at for this. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I have all the windows open, um, even though it's winter time, the exhaust fans on, all the Christmas candles are lit to try to fill the house with gingerbread scent instead of uh, the toxic fumes. So we'll see how it goes. Now it's time to start getting some real work done on the engine, starting with some new piston rings on our pistons. I can't recommend enough to get this sort of piston ring spreader plier piece. They're not expensive and it's just the right way to do it. I see some videos of guys showing you how to do it by hand, but trust me, just get the right tool. It's so much easier. Now I'm skipping over a lot of parts because I know you don't really care about just watching me put gaskets in place, right? You want to see progress. So I'll just make a few notes as we go here. First of all, you remember that I got my cams reground across the country. It took a little bit to get back, but now they're in perfect shape. Now on the outside of the cam stock, there's just a solid bushing. So we're upgrading that bushing with these roller bearings. It's pretty common on these Viragos to have oiling issues, especially at the top end. So from what I hear and read, this helps. Now we just set our cam chain up, make sure our timing is spot on. You can see all of our index markings lined up. This cylinder's at top dead center and we torque that cam bolt to spec. And torque the other one to spec, click. And our assembled engine came out absolutely gorgeous. Looks fantastic. Let me give you the update on our CB175 now. We are making progress. So the first thing that I noticed was that the electronics weren't coming on even with the good battery. You can see I had to pull a lot of it out. You can see some fresh electrical tape here and there. So I've actually never seen this before on these old bikes. It needed a new ignition switch. Um, th these ignition switches are really simple. I'm surprised that it needed a new one, but it did. It tested bad and these uh, really cheap sort of Chinese replacements actually worked great. Um, it's an interesting little harness here that's unique. So it was nice having something that just plugs right into that. And we needed a new starter solenoid here. After that, then the electrics came on, kind of. The wiring harness in here was so old, dried out and fragile that as soon as you like moved any of it, it just disintegrated apart. So much so that some of these connectors you can see I had to replace because they were completely disintegrated away, exposing the bare copper. I had to add some more electric tape under there because it was like shorting out against other things. The headlight wasn't coming on, so we had to fix up some of that, and now the electrics work. I also, which is a pretty common mod on these, there's a little wire right in there connecting the handlebar stud down to the forks, or the lower triple tree, I guess, because the starter button, the way the starter button works is when you press the button, it grounds out the system. So that's why it starts, right? It completes the circuit by grounding it on the handlebars. The problem is, is the handlebars aren't really all that well grounded either because they're attached to the handlebar risers, which are sort of rubberized. So a common mod is to add that wire grounding all the handlebars onto the frame. Once that was done, then our push button start worked. But as you know, because you heard in the last video, there was some grinding and metal sounding things when we tried to start it. So as you come down here, you can see this is the starter motor. It spins the chain, which then turns the crank. Now, first of all, you know that you can see there's something missing there, right? The giant rotor or magneto or whatever. But you can see the chain has lots of slack, so much slack that look, that's no bueno. 
right? That was probably some of that metal sound that when we tried to start it, we could hear. This chain has excessive slack in it, which was beating against the case. So we have to get a new chain. Also, you'll notice over here, we see our starter clutch right in there. There's our springs and little thingies, whatever they're called. Um, it's not totally disintegrated like these do get sometimes, but you can see how they're kind of like sticking, right? Like there it comes out and then boom, right? So that should be much uh, firmer and better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those springs uh, and caps and everything in the starter clutch. Now, <laughs> I wish that was all, but when we bench test the starter motor itself, I pulled it and bench tested it. It's making some vicious noises from within the starter itself. So the starter motor is shot as well. As far as that goes, I'm probably just going to get a used working one off eBay. I'm not even going to bother disassembling it. I'm just going to get a used one that works because it's like, you know, 30 bucks, throw it on. We adjusted the valves. They were really, really tight. I mean, barely any clearance at all. So we adjusted all the valves. We set the timing, so that's perfect. We have spark on it. We cleaned up some of the surface rust on the metal. This thing is coming together pretty nicely. You can see the carbs over here. I'm just waiting on one new float to come in. So I put these in the ultrasonic cleaner. They are sparkling clean. As far as the rusty fuel tank goes, you can see it's sitting over here off on the side and inside that tank is two and a quarter gallons of vinegar. So I'm gonna let that sit in there for about a week. You can see it's already starting to sort of melt away that rust. Look at that water in there, right? Super cloudy and murky. I left the petcock on so we didn't have to try to tape it off. So I also got a replacement petcock here that we're gonna go ahead and put on as well. That way we just don't have to worry about it. One thing that I'm liking about this little 175 is that it has everything a bigger bike has, just sort of smaller or simpler versions of it, right? Uh, so much so that, dare I say, it's a bit easy. I mean, sure, uh, there's a lot of stuff wrong with it, right, to get it perfect, but it's not really all that hard. Now I know you want an update on the Virago project and unfortunately not a whole lot has been going on. Under this paper is the engine completely uh, put back together minus a few things. So I guess it's not complete, but you know, uh, all the pieces for it and the frame and everything uh, is under these covers right there waiting to get powder coated. So it's just a matter of taking bit by bit by bit to the powder coater. I already have the colors picked out and the wheels stripped down and everything. Now my cousins, uh, Yamaha XS750 is right there. We're just sort of waiting for her to make up her mind when it comes to a few uh, design uh, directions. You know, what seat she wants to put on to determine what type of, you know, rear frame hoop we need to do and things. So that's kind of stalled for, you know, a week or two as well. So we got 18 projects going on at once, sort of making a little progress here on there on each one, but Sorry about that beeping noise. Uh, that's the baby monitor. Um, I guess she woke up from her nap, so I should probably go inside and get her up. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.